So today we are talking about images. How to um, insert image into our page. Now, just like um, we did for links, in order to link our web page to another web page or external resource, we used the anchor tag. Similarly, if we, if we want to embed an image into um, our web page, we use the image element. And if the image element is one of those elements that are self-closing. Now, if you notice, anchor tag as opening tag and also an closing tag there but unlike anchor tag the image tag has just the opening tag the self-closing tag so within this opening tag you specify the attribute source. The source is also is telling you <clears throat> where the browser should go and fetch the image you are trying to load. So you put the source here, dot JPEG, whatever file format. Then another one important um, attribute is the alt attribute. Uh, attribute. And the purpose of this attribute is to describe the image. Is to describe the image that you are inserting. And why is it important? It is important because um, not everyone can see the web page. The the uh, the blind uh, fraction of the of, of the population. They use uh, machine reader to read web pages. And because they, they cannot view the web page, the ma machine reader we have to read the description of the, of the uh, image. That there's, there's an image here, and this is the type, type of image that you have in the page you are listening to. So it is so important. Uh, the fact that I said important does not mean that if you do not put it, that uh, your image, uh, your web, 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 web page will not be loaded. It will be loaded. But there are some um, development environments that we, we, give, we, not run, we, we not run, it will tag it as error if you do not include the alt tag. So I want you to get into the habit of the habit of including the alt tag every or every time that you are trying to embed an image so let's go on so um this is um this is a source attributes i just discussed and the alt attributes i just discussed now, every image has a dimension. You need to give, give it a dimension like the width and the height, which you want the image to, to be in. For example, maybe you want an image to be within a container of 400 by 400 pixel container. So you need to specify the width of the image to include in that <clears throat> in that uh, container. So, um, and th and that is pretty much about image. Now, image map. I um I I don't have the tool to actually explain this to the fullest, but I'm going to explain what image map is all about. But before before that. Let me go to the visual code so that we demonstrate 
what um, how to include an image. Now, this is an image. Um, uh, I've changed. Okay. All right. Now, look at this. Oh, let me create. Let me remove. The, the, let, let me remove this one. I don't want to change my code. Let me change my code. Okay, so I'm going to create another file. Let me see this one. Yes. Mm. Okay, let me just create another file here in there. So now I'm going to create another file. I will call it um, index.html because I want you to see it from the scratch, from the beginning. So I will put in the boilerplate. I hope um, there's no one here that is um, having difficulty in this any longer. I I've seen Joshua improved on this, right? So I hope there's no one that is finding this strange. No one. Yes or no? Is there anyone finding this strange? This this no sir. Boiler please. No one. Um Jeff, are you finding this one strange? Do you, yes, sir. You find this strange? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. So I want you, because I'm I'm not going to explain here, so that you will not draw others back. I I okay, want sir. you go to the re recordings. I have yes. explained this over and over many times. So go to the recordings, and okay. uh, and uh, review it. Okay, sir. Now, as we know that um, any content that we want to be displayed in on the browser should go into the um, body tag. So I'm going to create a div here yeah? and I will give it um, a class of container just to give it um, a description, right? An identity. Now, if I run this, you will not see anything whatsoever here. Why? Because it's just a container. I've not given it any content. However, I can make this to have, and I, I can put, I can put an image in, inside this div element as content as a as a content. Now, if I do image tag, remember that there are two important attributes that I need to give it. The first attribute is SLC, and the next attribute is ORT. Then I will close the tag. I'm closing this way because it is a self-closing tag. Unlike this div, you can see that this div has an opening tag and a closing tag. Similarly, look at the HTML as an opening tag and a closing tag. If I if I indent so that you, you see properly, right? The content of this HTML is everything within the HTML element. Now, the content of this head is everything inside the head element. Similarly, the content of this body element is everything inside that body element. Now, I want to give 
this um image tag a source file and if you look at my image folder here i have um, a teamwork jp jp dot jpg a board dot jpg and also i have a desktop dot jpg now i want you to listen carefully look at the location the location where you have the images the first image is right in the same directory directory with my home page, which is the index.html. The location matters a lot because when we are talking of relative path, you will, relative relativity has to um, to um, takes reference from the location where you are kind of coming going out from or um, where you are going to now right now i am right inside this index.html that is my location and i'm trying to get a resource out outside this file right now because if i want to get to this desktop.jpg for example because it is in the same directory with my index all i can do i can just simply uh, just type the, the file name there and it will view it as you can see it is there but the file is very big because if, if uh, the file size is very big and that is why it appears that uh, it's covering in fact, exceeding the the browser viewports is there, it but is very very big. You can see this is image. It's a very large file, but there's a way we can um, re reduce the size, and that is the purpose of this of this um, of the width and the height attributes now if you look at um let's go back now if i need to give it an alternative right um description so i will say um this desk desktop or, or maybe should i say okay desktop um image so now I can use the width attribute and reduce the size to maybe, let's say, um, let me say 700 pixels, for example. If I go to the browser, now you can see that the, the size has reduced to 700 pixels. Now, I want you to note something here. You will, you will observe that I did not state the height. And the reason why I am not stating the height is very simple. I want the image to maintain what is called the aspect ratio. Right? There's a ratio between the width and the height of the image. If I reduce, uh, as I reduce the width to 700 pixels, eh, the image will, re will automatically res resize its own height to uh, the right ratio. But if I go ahead, for example, and I specify um, that as a size for the maybe the height, it may, it's most likely to skew the image somehow most likely to skill, to skill the image somehow. It will kind of either expand it or try to kind of uh, compress it somehow. So, but uh, as you can see, th this this appears like um, compressed, um, like uh, compressed um, horizontally. But if I remove the, 
the height attributes, the aspect ratio is maintained. The aspect ratio is maintained. It should refresh by itself. Uh -huh. The aspect ratio is maintained. Now, um, some people ask me in, in time past, what can 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 we style the width this this same width using a normal CSS? Yes, you can style style your image using the CSS um the style style tag. In fact, it is even pre uh, preferred that you use CSS to style the, to style the the size of the image. Why? Because whatever you write here, we override what you have in here. It will override it. This is just an attribute to the image element. So if I decide to to put to to say width now, you will see. Let's say 400 width or 400 pixel. You will see. Oh, sorry, I didn't put it inside a, an image selector. I need to select the image, then the property and the value right in there. So in fact, let, let me reduce it. Aha. So now you can see that it has reduced further. So this style, CSS style, we override what is here. And that is the more reason why it is preferable to, um, to have um, your, your, your image style using CSS. Is there any question so far on what I have said? Any question? Any question? No question. Okay. Now, um, I want Boda Demola so tell me what to do. I, I want to include this same image, desktop, desktop.jpg. I want to include it in this page. Ademola, tell me what to do. Okay, so where your um, cursor is, mm -hmm. you put an opening tag. Okay. Open then tag of what? IMG. IMG image. Okay. What then next? space. Space. SRC. SRC. Equals to. Equals to. Mm -hmm. The name of the file, which is desktop.jpg. Okay. Then space. Space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then out. Out. Equals to. Equals to. Whatever you want to name is like so. So give it a name. Give 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 it a description. Um. Let's say. Um. Desktop picture. Desktop picture. picture. Yeah. Okay. And then, you can adjust the size. How do I adjust the size? So you go to another line. Yes. Go on. Yeah, so you go to another line and you... I don't need to go to another line, just go on. Okay, then you press with. With, type with. Yeah, type with. Mm -hmm. Equals to um, the amount of size you want it to be. So what size do you want it to be? 500 px. 500 pixel, okay. Yeah. Then to close it, you use a slash closing tag. Okay, thank you. So thank you so much. So that is how you include image in your web page. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how to navigate from 
the so index. Can I ask a question? Right yeah. So I've seen places where they didn't really use the, the PX. There's just the, for example, say just 500 without putting the PX. Would that work? It might work. Yes. Why not? Okay. It might work. You see? Okay. That's fine. But, but why do you want to put just 500 without putting the unit? It's like saying, um, uh, instead of saying um, 60 miles per hour, you are just saying 60. 60, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's better specified. Of course, it's, it's better specified. Okay. Yes. So, any more question? Nothing for me. Thank you. All right. So, now, I want to move from this index.html to a, another image file inside this the image directory. So now I want you, oh, let me clean that thing. Uh, yes. So now because these images, these two images, they are in a directory different from where this in different from the directory where the index.html is located. So we cannot or I cannot just refer to, for example, teamwork.jpg or board.jpg. If I try to do that, let, let me see teamwork.jpg. If I try to do this, teamwork teamwork dot jpg you will see it's not loaded and now because the image file would not be loaded can you see that the de the alt tag now takes over that okay I'm, i i am trying to load a picture here that is that is uh, described as desktop picture, right? Pick, uh, picture, picture. Can you imagine? So now, so because the the image could not be loaded, the alt attribute, the value of the alt attribute, kicks in, uh, kicks in. Now, it's uh, the this image. Could not be loaded. Why? Because it is in another directory entirely. I therefore I need to refer to that direct directory. And how do I do that? I will use the dot four slash image. The, that's the name of this directory. The four slash the teamwork, and that will load the pick here right as you can see let's go to the browser so that you can appreciate it better so you can see so now this one i will say um teamwork um, team at work team at work right so team at work so you can see and because the the board and the teamwork they are in the same directory, so I can also um just type board dot jpg. Something will happen here. Okay, all right, nothing happened because the size is is still within the size. Okay, I will I, I will do something now that you see. So now by now. You should know how to move to refer to a resource within your page setup. Is there any question on what I just explained now? 15 more minutes. Yeah, I have one. I don't understand okay. why you use forward uh, slash before the image. Yes. Now, good. You mean this one, right? Yes. Good. Now, if I remove it, as you can see, is still working. 
right? Now, if if if, if you if, if, let's go back to the, the to that desktop desktop. Yeah. If I do dot four slash then desktop, you will see it will still work, right? Now, this is the best practice. You include the dot forward slash before reads mm -hmm. to state that yes you are going you are moving from one from from this um, current file you are into into another file entirely into another space entirely now me for me to state dot dot forward slash then the image means that i'm i'm going out of this directory entirely into another directory okay. and inside that directory you can see i have the board and the teamwork uh, right. images there right but like you just like pixel just like unit see if i remove it it will work but best practice include it right that's great thank you all right so sorry uh brad tell us it's allowing the unit the unit thing is very very important because when you see 500 or you 500 you could be 500 pixel or it could be 500 percent or it could be 500 inches or it could be 500 centimeters those yes. are all those are all units that could have used units. instead of pixel yes and you need to be you need to be specific, specific if you don't yes. put anything there it will be the default will be pixel the, but it is nice yes. it's the best practice to put so that you are expressive yes don't leave, uh, don't uh, leave it don't leave the chances. unit out at all because, I mean, I'm just putting it, but I just I was looking into a textbook and mm. they didn't put it, so I was just mm. wondering if um because that if, is accepted. Because okay. if you don't put it, you are you, you are you are um, kind of um, leaving your your code to, to be interpreted it? exactly to be yeah. interpreted by the browser at at, uh, at its own judgment call. So it yeah. is better include the units. It's, it's important. Great, thank you. All right. Any other question? Okay, no question. Now, um, by default, by default, let me go to the browser because what I, I'm about to say now is better um, shown on the browser. By default, if the image, the size of the image is smaller than the container, the image will repeat itself. Now, this is not repeating, probably because we specified this width. Okay, let me see. Okay, fine. It's still, it's still adjusting to, to the size because, because we have not specifically given the container a size. Now, let me give this container a size so that you appreciate what I'm talking about. Style. Container. For me to target this class, uh, this, this div, since I'm using a class attribute here, I can use the class selector. And for me to use the class selector, then I will use the dot the, the name of the the class. So now let me give, let me say width is 100%. Take the full size of the viewport and the height. Height. The height of what? Um, 100 viewports. The height of 100 viewports. The viewport height. Now, we have given this um, container, right? Um, oh, okay. Yes, this will not happen. It, it, it will only happen when we are talking about the background image. I, mix, I, I, I just mix it up now. When we get to the background image, you will, uh, you, you will understand what I'm talking about. So now, it, for the image tag, it will maintain the size of the image, right? Now, if we now go to try to include 
a back this this image as background here as background image for example so let me remove this let me comment out this this um image tag from there now i will state the url which is the dot image then the board now if you go to the browser you you can see that there is repetition of the image now this is the default behavior of background image now but when we when we were discussing the just the image tag the image will occupy the size the original size of the image if if there is no width or height stated now let's assume that i create i am i create a paragraph tag here let me go and get um let me get um some data somewhere let me see lorem lorem if some just copy lorem if some somewhere okay let's see i have this data here in in between there now let's see what happens on the browser when we load it you can see that the um the content of the paragraph comes right below the image why is it so it is so because the paragraph element is a block level element it will only occupy its own space from the from the far left to the far right now if for example let us assume that this is um, an inline let's say for example let, let's use an an inline element like the span tag let's see what will happen span now you can see that the con the, the test content is trying to wrap itself around around the image but is not even going up to the to that level we will discuss more about this when we are discussing css because that is when we will be talking about floating when you want your test to wrap around your image we will be discussing more about that so i want for 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 for, to, for this lesson i want you to understand how to include the image that is one then two how to include background image now the background image is like um it's like uh, a wallpaper on your wall and the, the the fact that you have a wallpaper on your wall does not prevent does not stop you from hanging your maybe um, a picture frame on the wall now if i if i rem if, if i uncomment this now you will see that what we our content right if you see this our content is right on top of the background image you can see the the content and th this is a false image here it's like you are you are placing it you are placing the content on the background so you no know, um if you look at a sample of this look at this website now this this is an this is an this is a, this is an image it's a it's a background image and you can see the test content written on top of it even look at this um button on, on top of it so the, this image is on the background whereas the experience team and the, the other uh, tests are on top of it with the button so you can 
you can you can achieve the same the same the same future or, or effect using your background image. In CSS, we will discuss more about how to make this background to look um, kind of uh, transparent. Because if you look at what we have here at the moment, the contrast between your content and the background is not too good, right? It's very the contrast is very uh, contrast is very poor. So it makes the um, content kind of uh, difficult to read, right? Unlike what we have, what we have right here. This is more readable, is legible. So, but in CSS, when you are going into CSS, we will discuss more about that. So, let me remove this content. And, um, and test our knowledge on this background image. Now, remember, if I remove, remove comment out this one, on, uh, the difference between the background image and the image is is the is the source, right? In the image, you have the source attribute that links the file to your web page, but in the background image, you use the URL. So that is the um, uh, uh, point you need to note. In background image, you you use a URL. And in image, you use a source. Now, if I don't want, if I don't want um, the image to repeat, like like so, it's just a matter of, of me putting the background repeat property, and I will give it no repeats. So, and as you can see, it's not no longer repeating. But the default behavior is to repeat. It is to repeat. Let me see the content of our file. Okay. Okay. We are now the responsive images. Okay. Back, okay. Background images is, is even here. Okay. Fine. So now, um, there, there there are other values also. If, if you if you want it to stretch to to cover the whole page, you can use the attributes. No, the that one is on the size. No repeat, then you specify the background size. The background size is here. And I can say it should cover the whole page, but the image quality will be very bad because it will look bold. Why? Blood, because I've stretched the image beyond its limits. So it is not a good, a good um, idea to stretch an image beyond its limits, the quality of the image will drop. So I'm going to remove this one and leave it at, at this. Now, I want to discuss one more thing before we close tonight. Now, if you remember the, the last homework, let me remove this one also. If you remember the last homework where I said the no, not the last one, the the the, 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 the one before the last, where I said the design the front page of this book. Now you you will notice that the background Im, there's a background image here, and it is um, it, it is a linear. It is a linear uh, gradient um, background. How do we achieve it? How can we achieve this? Now, I need to kind of uh, explain here. Now, let's say this is our container, right? This is a container. Now, if you look at this container, you will see that there is a kind of direction from zero degrees, clockwise, 90 degrees, then 180 degrees, um, 270 degrees, 
then back to 360 degrees. So zero and 360 degrees, they face the same direction. Now, in linear gradients, right? Um, let me see whether I, I have a, a web page that, that I can give you. I think I do. Um, okay, let me just Google it. Let me just Google it. So linear, let me go back here. Um, I think color gradients also. Okay, now, there are many tools out there that you can use to develop gradients, right? Now look at this one now. The I can decide to um, make this ninety degrees. I will I will explain this one. Now this is using like three colors: one, two, three, to form to form a gradient, right? Look at this. Look, look, just look at this. You can see the shade of this color moves from the uh, the, the darker side. All right, so a very bright side of it. And this is what we call gradient, nothing more. Now, let, let's go back so that I can explain what this is all about. Now, the direction. When you, are, when, if, when you want to use a linear gradient uh, background, you need to first of all um, identify the direction you are, you are going the direction you are going. So now, um, if, if I state background, background, then linear gradients. It, it is a method. Now this method, right? I will just use that as a closing bracket. So I will first of all state the direction where the the gradient is going. Then I will now state my colors: color one, um, then color two as many colors I want, color three, and so on and so forth, like that. Now, um, I, can I, I, I can state the starting point of a color. If, for example, I want the white to start from, from here, which is 0% zero, zero of this height, I will say white, I will give it a white color here, start at 0. Then the next color, maybe I want it um, um, blue, for example, blue. I want blue to start at 40%. So I will say start from 40, like that. Then the next color, maybe I want it red. I will say, okay, red, you can start at um, maybe, um, let's see, 60% of the height, 60 right then if there's no other color then that means that the red will now fill in the space here this space will be filled with white blue then the red so let us practicalize this because what, what i'm saying will look gibberish right before your eyes so now let, let's go back to the code now I will need to reduce the size of this container so that we, we, we can see it clearly. Let's say I have a um, 400 pixel and um, height of, um, let's say, 300 pixel, 300 pixel. Now, and I want to give it a background color of um, background li li linear gradient. So I will say background, 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 
then I will say linear gradient. Can you see that this is a function, is a function. Now, the first thing I'm going to give it here is a direction. Like I said, let me go back to my uh, board. Zero, 90 degrees, 180 and 270. If I say zero degrees, that means that I am um, moving from the bottom towards the zero degrees. If I say 180 degrees direction, if I state the direction to be 180 degrees, that means that I'm moving from the top facing down towards the 180 degrees. Likewise, if I say 90 degrees, right, it's like I'm moving from the left to the right side of it, moving towards my, my right, facing the 90 degrees. Similarly, if I say 270 degrees, I'm moving from my right to my left side of it. I can state uh, 120, maybe this, is what, this, angle, this angle here is about 120 degrees. Right. If I say 120 degrees, so that means that that means that the color we we great we be we, we, we kind of be linear towards this direction. So it depends on the direction you want. But if we look at our our um, front page, you will see we can either go from from uh, bottom up or from top to bottom, whichever direction we want. So, but let us take, let us go from uh, top to bottom. That which simply means that if, if we are going from top to bottom, so that means that I will state the direction as 180, 180 degrees because I am facing the 180 degree uh, side of it. Then I will now state the color I want. Now, the color I want the color to start from maybe I said white, right? So RGBA. Remember that um, this is a color component. R stands for red, G stands for green, and B stands for blue. So I'm going, okay, for now, let me remove this A, this alpha. Now I will give. Um, the red component to the full size of it for me to have white. All the components must have their full value. So 255, 255. Then I will say, okay, start from zero position, right? Uh, that's zero percent. I can say zero percent, or I can just, since it's zero, I can now, I can leave the percentage out. Now, I said the next one should be red color so i will say rgb rgb right then red 255 then the rest is zero then i say you it should start from where 40 percent 40 percent now i will go to the next one say RGB, I want it blue. So I will give the red component zero, the green component zero, then the blue component full value. Then I will give it, say, okay, start from um, where again? Um, this one starts started from 40. Okay, let me see 60%. 60%. Like so. Then maybe let's give it one more color green. RGB, red is component is zero, green component is full, then the blue component is zero. Then I will say this one should be 80%, 80%. If we go and go to the browser to view what we just did, you can see, look at this. From the beginning, we, start, we started from white, then, Red kicks kicks up around this place to the blue, to the to to the green. You can see the var the variation in color as we move from top to the bottom. 
We are moving from top to bottom because we stated the direction to be 180 degrees. If I change it to be zero degrees, you will see the color turning upside down, zero degrees. You can see it changes direction. If I say 90 degrees, it will start from your left hand side to your right hand side, as you can see. If I say 270 degrees, it will start from the right hand side facing the left hand side. Now, let's say 120 degrees. 120 degrees, you can see. Now, you can see that it's kind of diagonal in nature because 120 is around is this direction. So, and that is the direction the color variation will follow. So, any question on this? Any question? So, I think the class, yes, it's uh, one, one more minute. Any question on this? Any question, please? Okay, no question. Now, I, I, I want... Um, um, but uh, Ademola, if if I want the gradient, the the gradient to to face to to uh, to face, to move from my upper upper left corner, I want it to move from here to face this direction. How do I do it? Ademola. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Uh -huh. I want the gradient to start from here and go that direction. How do I do it? Um so I know how to do it, but like I don't know like the coordinates for the points. Like, now if you want to determine the coordinates, it's very simple. Divide, use your cardinal points. Yeah. Right, this is 0, 90, 180, 270, right? Yeah. So if you divide th this quadrant into two, this is 45 degrees. Yes or no? Yes. If you divide this quadrant into two, this is 120. Yes or no? Is it 120? Yes. Yeah, I, I think. So. No, 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 it's not. It's 125. Have you? This is 45, 45, 40, 135. This 135. Right? If you divide yeah. this quadrant into into half, add 45 to this. This is a 225. Similarly, this, if you divide this into two, add 45 degrees to this, that, that will be 315 degrees. It's very it's very easy. So now giving you this cardinal point, I want this gradient to face this direction. This okay. this this, uh, this direction. So, okay. so what is the direction I, I, I should give the linear gradients? This this direction here, this one. This one. Like 45. 45? Yeah, because it's coming from the 45 place. From here, I'm facing this this direction. You know, it's like starting from upper left corner facing the right. lower lower left um left corner starting from up upper right corner yeah. facing the lower left corner yeah it's starting from the upper left corner so okay it's going to be what five or is it okay you, you said 45 right okay yeah. okay hold on now remember that our starting color is white, right? This is our starting color, is yeah. white, then followed by red. Okay. Now let's change it. Let's change. Let's change it to um, forty-five, as you suggested, forty-five degrees. Let's go to the browser. Oh. Mm -hmm. so you, can, you can see you are facing. You are you are starting from here, facing this direction. That is what you are doing. You are facing 45 degrees. Oh, okay. It's going to be 225. Exactly. It's going to be 225. 
let me clear my, my, my board. It's getting messy. So it's going to be 225, 225. So that is the right direction. You can see now that it's coming from the left, in the right upper corner to the lower left corner. Yeah, okay. Good. Now, I want to ask uh, Sister Larry, I want to change the color just to two colors. And the colors, I want the color to, to be white, just like, um, let me see, where is it? Huh. Now, this is the white and ash color. Let me try and see whether I can get this color. Uh, color picker is not here. Wow, it's not there. Okay. Let me see, where is the uh, other page? No, 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 no. Where is the other browser? Mm, I can't. Okay, let me try and pick this color. Just let me pick this color. Uh, my dropper. Mm. Uh, how do I? Okay, let me. Can I change it here? No, I can't. Uh, how uh, can I? Where is the eyedropper now? Focus on how to use this stuff. <laughs> Wonderful. Eyedropper, eyedropper. Can't pick. Okay, okay, I can't pick color from this page. Okay. Let me okay, let me try and pick this. Let me see. Eyedropper. Okay, pick your color. Okay, let me pick this one. Why can't I pick color? Okay, I can't pick color from this picture either. Okay. Let me let's manufacture our own color then. So if we can if if you can't do that, let me go to where is my CSS? Um uh, CSS um, color 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 color. Go, 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 go. So are we looking for like a gray color? Yes. It's one to eight, one to eight, one to eight. That okay, one to one to right? One to eight, one to eight, one to eight, one hundred and twenty-eight. Okay. okay, let's let's try that. So now I want you, Sister Larry. We we are trying to. Uh, why is this not working? Now we want to create this linear gradient. You can see this white to mm -hmm. this ash color. So two colors there, right? So now, what? How do we go about it? So the, the, the background one with the yeah. uh, oh, I'm not sure what the degree would be. To be honest, you're not sure what the degree. Look, look, look at it. What degree do you, do you want to choose? Um, look at where the white is and look zero. At the, zero. Now, if you choose zero. Which direction are you going? Um, upwards. Up from bottom to top, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So if the, the moment you know you are going from bottom to top, so which color should be first? The gray. The one. gray. Good. Thank you. So the gray. So that means if we say zero degrees, then we say RGB. Right? Yeah. You, and you said 128. 128. 128. 
and 128. Okay, so and that is starting at at zero percent, right? Yes. Okay, so then the next color is white. So that one is very simple. Just make it two five five, two five five, and two five five. Two five five. Right. So then, at what point do you think um the white shoe commence? Now we, we are moving from bottom to top. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, the, the gray started from 0% is right okay. here. So, at what point do you think the uh, white background should kick off? Um, I would say... We are eight minutes behind schedule. Uh, so, if we said the gray one is what? Shall we say 360 or 180? No, 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 no. no. Now... Remember, you said we are starting from the bottom up, this way up. Yeah, with gray, yeah. Right. So we started now. The reference point is this bottom now. Mm -hmm. And this is the height of the container. So the, the, um, the gray, we start at 0% mm -hmm. of this height, which is the beginning. Now, if, if, if you do not specify where the white will begin, the gray will just occupy everything. Your, the, everything. So we at what percent, what what fraction of this height should the white kick off? Should uh, you no know, start uh, um, being the background? So I think the gray should be like a, a, a third and then the white two thirds. Okay, two, one, one third of 100%. Yeah. Is uh, is about thirty three percent, right? So let so let's say thirty five percent, right? Yes. So that means that the white should start from thirty five percent to the hundred percent, yeah. right? Yeah. This is this is hundred yeah. percent of the height. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now let let's go back to the code. So let me clear my screen. Clear my screen. So I'm going to give this thirty five percent. Yes, so I think you have done it. Where is my browser? Yeah, that, that one. Can you see? Yeah. Aha. So I hope it is clear to all because now I want you to go back to this, to the, uh, to this assignment remember that in 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 this assignment i i i did not um put, put this as a as a requirement for you to achieve this background so go back to this assignment and put the background into the assignment and for those who did not do the assignment the last time this is what you are to design and i will repeat again for the sake of those who did not do the last assignment you will notice that everything is in a container. Now, look at where this fast overview of HTML is, is centralized. Mm. This HTML and cheat sheet is in alignment with the left-hand side. The fourth edition is in alignment with the left the right hand side and you can you you should note that the linear gradient only affects html cheat sheet part of fast overview of html language it does not affect the first edition so note that so i want you to complete that assignment by inserting the background of linear gradient. Is the assignment clear enough? Oh, yeah. is, is the assignment clear enough? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. It is doable. So uh, uh, I, 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 can, I can tell you that one of you has already done it. One of you has already done it, right? The person, I, I'm not going to mention them now. The person sent me 
the work and I looked at it. Wonderful. The person tried. I, I'm trying to avoid uh, the gender, right? And just to tell you, let, let me show you what I did Im immediately after. On that same day, the very night I gave you the the, the assignments. This is the solution, but, I'm, but I'm, I'm trying. I will close. I'm going to close uh, quickly. Move the code away. Aha. So let me run this. Open in live server. Those that joined the last the, the, uh, in that, I think the class before the last, I showed you this. This is the solution. It's doable. It's not that it's not doable. So I want you to give it a shot. Right? You can do it. Any question for for tonight before we we close it? Can you show the solution again, please? <laughs> I will not show you the code. <laughs> I will show you the solution. Yes. See, <laughs> this is the solution. <laughs> so can you see the solution? Yeah, I can see the answer. You showed yeah. the solution earlier on. <laughs> uh, no, there's no answer. I, I, <laughs> except, except you were in the class that time that I just showed a glimpse of it. Aha. Mm. Uh -huh. So maybe in the next class, they yeah. will now discuss this solution. Okay. That, that will be a class on its own. So because I want us to um, kind of use the skill that we learned about alignment, um, the background image, or uh, yes, the background, uh, background, which is the linear grid, uh, linear gradient. I want us to use it, and also to now learn how to use container to arrange our our, our content. So, any more question? No question. All right. Thank you. So we will meet on. Saturday by the special grace of God. Amen. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Bye.